adversity brings opportunity. And, and really, I think what you do with that opportunity is what defines you. Hey there. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I'm glad that we finally get to talk after almost talking and then obviously yes. stuff happened. Yes. Uh, and sorry for all of that. Um, no. The last few months have been uh, a little bit of a roller coaster ride. It sounds like you have broken another world record, correct? That is correct. Uh, so, you know, we ran for a record down in Nevada in October, and that record was brought into question um, by some outside groups. And after further review in-house, we, we weren't able to 100 percent be able to back up our record because of the way we had captured it. And that... That was uh, a mistake that I, I made a, a, in the way we captured it. And, and that just wasn't fair for my staff or any of the teams around the world that are behind the success of the Twitara project. And so um, we made an internal decision that we were going to have to go back and go through this whole process again and rerun for the record. Uh, this time, we decided to learn from what we had been through in October and do it in a completely different manner. And uh, it was, there was a lot of people around us that said this was going to be risky, but we basically took anybody on the outside. There were some big time YouTube influencers um, who had brought the doubts uh, to the public. Uh, we decided to invite them for any of our testing and our record attempts. Um, we also, instead of just using one GPS uh, group's equipment in the car, we used four. And we actually used four different companies, had staff from two of those companies on site, had them put all of their equipment in the car. We didn't want to touch any of it. Um, and we ran through the process of doing some testing and uh, running record attempts. Um, one big variable that we threw into the mix uh, was that uh, the customer who owns this car so part of this record is that you have to use a production car. It's a customer style car, same type of car that anybody, any other customer would be able to purchase. Uh, we used the customer's car and he decided he wanted to drive. And so, you know, um, it, it, it made this uh, that much more complex because he had not spent very much time at 200 miles per hour. And we were getting ready to ask him to not only go 200, but 250, 260, 270 and above. Due to COVID, uh, it was really difficult to work with states to get permitting in place to shut down highways. And it was looking like it could be five to seven months out. And due to what happened in October, we kind of felt like the clock was ticking. Uh, we didn't want to wait six months to come back out and you know, go through the healing process and get this uh, validated and taken care of. And so the quickest way we could do this is we actually found out that down in Florida, we could, there's approving grounds down there and they actually use the runway that uh, used to be used for the space shuttle to land on, which was an amazing historical site. And, and I mean, it just had this really cool feel to it while we were down there doing our testing and record attempts. But we were able to go down there and use the runway to do these, um, to, to run for this top speed record. Um, it, it's probably good to educate people out there because some people are gonna say, well, you went 316 miles an hour in Nevada and how come you only average 282 miles an hour in Florida? Well, there's a really big difference. We had 11 miles of road in Nevada and which we used seven miles of that for acceleration and then the remainder for braking zones. When we went down to Florida, we only had 2.3 miles to accelerate and 0.7 miles to slow down. And so that we knew that was going to be a massive challenge. Um, and it, it was concerning in the beginning, could we achieve what we wanted to achieve? But as we went down there in December and started doing testing, we actually started, the whole team started embracing this new challenge because it was so much more difficult. And we actually were doing this like a drag race, like from a stop, how fast can you get through all the gears and get up speed? And, you know, what kind of speed could we achieve in 2.3 miles? And at the same time, let's throw a customer in there 
who hasn't really been 200 miles an hour before, and let's get him comfortable with seat time and see if we can make all this happen. And it was it was uh, a really rewarding experience. And we spent a couple different days down there doing testing. And last Sunday, on January 17th, uh, we went out early on the runway down in Florida, did a quick warm up pass, and then. We, we slow, what we did was we took some of the power out of the car. This is a 1,750 horsepower car. So we pulled some power out to get the customer ready for this. And then we actually ran a pass at 279.7 miles per hour. That was above the current world record. And as soon as we did that, we knew, you know, if we turn around and do this in the other direction in under an hour, that is a validated world record. It's not the the highest speeds we think the car is capable of, but it would be a nice milestone to hit. And so we decided we turn it around. We've got less than an hour to get ready and run in the other direction. We have all the validators there, everybody that's respected in the industry, because we have now done this in a, you know, we've opened the book and we're doing this in a full transparency method. And um, we decided let's go ahead and give him full power, but we're only going to do it in seventh gear. And, when you're trying to run in 2.3 miles, he, the driver came to me, and said, you know, the car feels amazing. Can you give me full power in fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh? And we just, you know, we're not done with doing this testing. We, we figured if we could achieve this world record right now, that's great. That's a great milestone. In the coming months, we're going to go back and we're going to continue to go faster. So we gave him full power in just the second half of seventh year. And we ran the pass the uh, opposite direction. He went 286.1 miles per hour. You average those two speeds together. It's 282.1. Um, and that, that, that is a new world record. And it, it was extremely rewarding uh, because we did it with a customer in the car. We did it in only 2.3 miles. Um, it made for some really cool in-car video. Uh, the group, which is called Race Logic, they're probably the most respected GPS company in the world as far as automotive measurement systems. Um, they use their equipment in the car, which shows the, the video from, from inside the cab looking at the front of the car. And it, it's such a different method to run for the record this way because uh, it is truly like a drag race. I mean, this car is just grabbing for grip through every gear as it is accelerating all the way up to 286 miles per hour. And so, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm really excited. All, all the, um, this release comes out, you know, tomorrow morning and, and we're really excited for people to not only see all the video and the fact that we did this in a transparent way brought in the, the naysayers and doubters and let them just watch over our shoulders through the whole time, listen to all our conversations. And at the same time, let the world know that we didn't use an accomplished European race driver to do this. Right. Just a customer, just like, you know, anybody else that could buy one of these cars, which I think is a true testament to the design of the car and how stable it was at these high speeds. Oh yeah. Uh, where's he from? He's actually from Philadelphia. He's a dentist. Oh gosh. How does it feel to have all that success in October and then all of that negativity and then to be where you are right now and be able to come back a month later and say, hey, we, we did it? You know, I've been at this a little over 20 years and we've been through quite a roller coaster ride chasing this dream. But I would have to say the incident in October was one of the most difficult things we had ever dealt with. Um, it was the highest of highs for my team and everybody involved in this project because it was a culmination of 10 years of design and development. And we achieved something that nobody else had ever done. And, and it felt so amazing for about seven days. <laughs> and then all of a sudden when the doubting came out and like I said, we kind of did a deep dive into the data that we had captured and we weren't able to go out and just 100% be able to say, you know, we did this and we can prove it. And instead of, you know, we, we had a choice to make. We could have tried to prove to the world, but I, we made an internal decision that if we do that, you're always going to have a percentage of the car community out there that are going to say, nah, that, that was not a legitimate record. And that to me is not what we were trying to achieve. And so even though it was difficult, we just decided that the right thing to do was to turn around, 
go out and do this again and kind of start setting the precedence for any other manufacturer out there in the future. If you're going to go run for this record, don't just show two passes, you know, uh, show the testing, bring people in, let them watch. How did you achieve this? Get it validated in with redundancy and make sure everybody knows that it's legitimate. And that way we know this time as this news comes out, I don't care what question somebody has. We have an answer for it. We have data. We have outside third-party groups. They're going to verify every step of this. And this feels, you know, so much better. And to me, it's adversity brings opportunity. And, and really, I think what you do with that opportunity is what defines you. And, and I'm really proud of what this team has just done. We, we feel that we've kind of got a couple of industry firsts here in the middle of this. One, we had a customer drive, which no manufacturers ever had a customer drive for a world record for top speed. Number two, no manufacturers ever gone out and broke their own, their own world record. And we currently hold the world record. And we already have plans in the coming months to go back and break our own record and raise that bar. Because what we saw in the last run on last Sunday, when we gave him, finally gave him full power, just the last part of seventh gear, we saw an acceleration at 274 miles an hour to 286, like no car has ever done before. And we now know, and we had room left, a little bit of room left in our, in this short 2.3 mile runway. So we know from looking at data this past week, we're going to go back this spring. We're going to go ahead and give him full power in fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear, seventh gear. What that's going to do is we'll accelerate quicker and we'll be able to achieve a higher speed. And we fully feel now that we can hit 300 miles per hour in that 2.3 miles. How many like, you know, YouTubers or spectators would you say were there? And what was their reaction after maybe posting mean things about you? <laughs> so uh, there's going to be some great follow-up videos because the naysayers and the doubters, uh, these are very engineer level guys um, that understand the data behind what makes these cars work in these high performance arenas. Um, we got to know them and, and I allowed that. I, I was confident enough of having them come out and spend time with our team, see our approach and see what this small organization is able to achieve against, you know, billion dollar manufacturers out there. And it, it, it's really neat that they, they're going to release their own videos of their experience in the coming days. And out of that, they basically are going to say they were nervous coming in to meet us because they knew that they had caused us a lot of problems. And there was, they felt like we had every reason to be upset with them. Yeah. And we, we, we welcomed them with open arms. And we, I actually appreciated the fact that they doubted it because it just, it, it, not just for us, but all future manufacturers, I want everybody to have to prove what they've done. Yeah. And so I, I think it's better for the industry in general. And so we've created some good relationships. It's going to be really fun as these influencers, some of these guys have two to three million followers. Those videos are going out later this week. And, and it, it, we, like I said, we've turned a really difficult situation into a great opportunity. Um, so, and then it looks like there was in between October and now there was a, another attempt that something went wrong. So the very first time we went down and used the space shuttle runway in Florida was in December. Right. And as I said, that, it, that was the first time we saw how challenging 2.3 miles was going to be instead of having seven miles to accelerate. And we went down at, for a first test run with a customer in the car. And we did find out that it, it was going to require us to take a few sub assemblies of the car and go next level. Uh, because being, being that we only had 2.3 miles, we actually are at full throttle, full boost for about 40 to 50 seconds in that 2.3 miles. When we were down in Nevada back in October, we actually brought the car up to about 180 or 200 miles an hour, nice and easy. We were nice to the drivetrain and engine, and then you're only full throttle for about 20 seconds. So this uh, this new exercise of doing this in a drag race style on 2.3 miles was much more rigorous on the car. And so in December, we learned that. And we actually came back and redesigned a few sub assemblies, which in turn makes a better robust car for all future customers down the road. So we're, like I said, we embraced this new challenge and actually looked at it as an opportunity.
I, I just, I love, I love this, this outcome. You know, I felt really bad about what happened. There's not a lot of people locally that, that know what happens right in their own backyard here with the cars we build. And, uh, in the last few months, it's been very interesting when I've either been in stores or, you know, some, somewhere publicly. And, and it, it, the support has been great that people have come up and heard about the controversy in October. And, um, you know, they've said supporting words and, and you know, it, it's been really nice. And I'm, I'm very excited. We're, we're in production on vehicles now and things are ramping up. And as we get past COVID and the world opens back up, we're really excited to be able to start doing tours and bring people in and let them be proud of, you know, this high level vehicle that's built right here in the 